All right, guys. Uh, let's do a macro question. 2010 macro FRQ number one. Assume the United States economy is currently in long-run equilibrium. Draw a correctly labeled graph of aggregate demand, aggregate supply, showing the long-run aggregate supply and current price and output as YEPLE. This is one of our five aggregate demand, aggregate supply curve graphs that we just have to draw. Price level on the vertical, real GDP on the horizontal, long run aggregate supply is vertical also, short run aggregate supply, and aggregate demand. We are in equilibrium. This point right here is full employment, maybe potential GDP. It is also our natural rate of unemployment. Again, this point right here is full employment. It is also called every so often potential GDP. It is also known as we are at our natural rate of unemployment. All three of those could be used. Uh, in this situation, we don't have to. Oops. Sorry. We just know that this whole graph is our economy in long run equilibrium. All right, good to go. Assume that the government increases spending on national defense. So now, out of the C plus I plus G plus XN, which is, let's just call it aggregate demand, the G goes up. If the G goes up, the aggregate demand has to go up. So our aggregate demand curve shifts to the right. Oops, did I not label? Let's go back and label the Y, E, P, L, E, P, L, E and Y, E. All right, aggregate demand shifts to the right. We are now in what we would call an inflationary scenario. On your graph, show how the government action is spending affects aggregate demand. It's gonna go up as we showed it. How will this government action affect the unemployment rate in the short run? And they want us to explain. So we can see there's just something we always sort of say the same way. When aggregate demand increases from here, we can see that the price level has gone up. We can see that output has obviously increased. The price level obviously went up also. If output goes up, unemployment has to go down. We're making more stuff. If we're making more stuff, we need more people at work, so it had to have driven unemployment lower. I'm assuming they're going to accept that, right? Uh, C. Assume that the economy adjusts to a new long-run equilibrium after increasing government spending. So this is that classical view uh, that you sort of have to understand that's answered pretty much the same way every time. And once we sort of know how they want us to answer it, uh, we can just put it into our brains and it doesn't really change. So we can see here that we're in an inflationary scenario. Um, we would assume that out unemployment is very low. Unem businesses are having to compete for workers because output is so high and there's a lot of low unemployment. So everybody's at work. So the only way to sort of compete for employees is to give them higher wages. So when we're in an inflationary scenario, wages tend to go up. We can say prices tend to go up. When wages increase, this is a cost to business. This is going to shift our short-run aggregate supply curve to the left. When our short-run aggregate supply curve shifts to the left because of those higher wages, it's going to cross right back through that point right there. So we tend to say this the same thing. It is a bit of a, it is the classical view. It is what happens in the long run. Right In the short run, here we are in an inflationary scenario. Uh, wages go up, prices go up. Our short run aggregate supply curve shifts to the left. And we return back to long run equilibrium at a higher price level. I think we hit, you can't make this any shorter. It's about as short and as succinct as you can possibly make it. So we are going to return back to full employment at a higher price level. Uh, let's see if we answered it. How will the short run aggregate supply curve and the, long, and the new long run equilibrium compare? 
from the initial long-run equilibrium. This is one of the College Board's um, word salads. We can see, I think all they want us to say here is that it's higher, the price level has increased, and obviously we've got our explanation over here. Um, wages went up, prices went up, short run air supply curve shifts to the left due to those higher wages. Remember, wages are a cost to business, right? Those costs to businesses are what shifts uh, short run aggregate supply curve. So if costs go up, obviously short run aggregate supply curve shifts to the left. On your graph, label the new equilibrium, sorry, new long run equilibrium price level is PL2. So I think here we are at PL2. I think we were probably supposed to label this. Did they ask us to label this inflationary? Let's just label it PL1, be happy with it. So we were at full employment. We went into an inflationary scenario in the short run. In the long run, wages go up, prices go up. This makes sense, right? That when wages and prices rise, that wages it shifts short run aggregate supply curve to the left. When prices go up, people buy less stuff. We go back to full employment. All right. D, in order to finance the increase in government spending, on national defense, the government borrows from the public. Now, anytime we're talking about government spending going up and borrowing from the public, this is also what we call crowding out. What I've noticed is that the College Board doesn't tend to use the phrase crowding out on any of their FRQs, none that I could find, but crowding out is what happens. Anytime government spending is going on, we just need to know that the real interest rate has to go up. If you learn this and put this in your brain, it's going to save you a lot of time. We're going to explain it right here. It says, using a correctly labeled graph of the loanable funds market, show the effect of the government's borrowing on the real interest rate. So we need to know how to draw the loanable funds market. It is just a supply of loanable funds, demand for loanable funds, you do have to know that real interest rate is on the horizontal, quantity of loanable funds on a, sorry, real interest rates on the vertical, quantity of loanable funds on the horizontal. When the government borrows, they're borrowing. Now remember, think of loanable funds as money in the banks. So loanable fund market, um, funds market, just think of it as money in the banks. If the government comes in and borrows from the banks, is there more money or less money in the banks? Obviously, the government walks in and says, hey, I need to borrow a billion dollars. The supply of loanable funds in the banks decreases. This is going to drive up the real interest rate. And this is that crowding out scenario. The government borrows. The real interest rate goes up and what we call private investment. Sorry, this gets a little. Private investment will decrease. This should make sense. If interest rates are higher, do people take out more loans or less loans? Obviously, the higher the interest rate, the less loans. So these private investors cannot find good cheap loans. So they're what we call crowded out of the market, right? They're crowded out of that loanable funds market because the government's sucking up all of those excess loanable funds and driving up the real interest rate. All right. Uh, e, given the change in real interest rate in Part D, what is the impact on the following? We've already kind of talked about that, right? As those real interest rates go up, and we, this is a, these are asked quite a bit. There's a ton of them, and we kind of answer them in always in the same way. When real interest rates go up, we know that investment is going to go down. If there's less investment, could we assume there's going to be less capital formation? If there's less capital what we know is that there's going to be less economic growth rate. Remember, one of your six things for your PPC is capital formation. So if there's less capital goods being produced, we know in the long run our growth rate is going to slow. So there's a number of ways they ask this very same question. They can call it growth rate. If real interest rates go up, we know our long run or our economic growth rate will go down. We could also say that our long-run aggregate supply curve, they might ask about that. If real interest rate goes up, what happens to your long-run aggregate supply? And we'll say it'll shift to the left. They could also say what happened to potential GDP, real GDP. 
and we would say real GDP decreased. They could also say what happened to your PPC, and your PPC obviously shifted inward. Recognize that your long-run aggregate supply curve is your PPC. Those two are ultimately connected. So anytime long-run aggregate supply shifts to the left, your PPC has to shift in. Anytime your long-run aggregate supply shifts to the right, your PPC is shifting out. Know all four of these phrases because they like to shift them up or, you know, give them to you at different times. And it is confusing if you don't know exactly what they're talking about. All right, that's fairly um, all over the place, but I think we got all the answers there. Um, all right, stay safe. Thanks. Bye.